Hey everyone, how's it going? Caleb here. I know it's been a while since I last made a video. Sorry about that. I was finishing graduating college, so that happened. I got a new job, so I'm getting settled in there, as well as I'm actually getting ready to move to a new place. So there's just a lot going on right now, a lot that was going on. But I'm here now, and I'm actually very quickly going to show you guys how to make Twitch or Discord emotes, whichever one you prefer. This method will, method will work for both. Um, do keep in mind, this is kind of like an impromptu video, so I'm sorry if I'm kind of all over the place. I have kind of tried to like structure things, but regardless, let's go ahead and jump right in right after this. All right, guys, so the first thing you want to do is just open up your preferred web browser, and I'm going to link it down below. I already have mine bookmarked, but you're going to go to kapwing or capwing.com, whichever. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. really haven't looked that much into it. Um, Yours isn't going to look like this right off the bat just because it's actually going to have you make an account 100% free. Um, don't have to worry about that. It's going to have you sign up with either Facebook or Google. So go ahead and sign in with that. Once you get signed in, um, we can go ahead and proceed. You're going to have multiple workspaces over here. Um, you'll just have the My Workspace to start. I always like to kind of keep my stuff very organized. So I made one called Twitch Emote. Once you have your desired workspace ready, what you're actually going to do is just hit new project. Once you hit new project, you're going to hit start with studio. This is the tool that we're going to use. So you can either start with the blank canvas, click to upload, or you can just drag and drop. I already have my folder up and I know what I want to bring in. Um, and it's going to be a picture of Chimchar. And do note, guys, that um, the images that work best with this method are images that have like very simplistic background so that the software can very clearly make out between the image itself and the background. So, for example, this method would not work very well with um, like a family portrait and you want to like cut yourself out of it and make yourself the emote for some reason. To do something like that, you'd want to refer to my other video that I'll link down below as well, like where you go into other GIMP or Photoshop and just actually cut it out. But anyway, going forward with this method, the next thing I actually want to do is um, change the size of this image, right? So that we can make it the preferred Discord emote size or Twitch emote size since they have specific parameters that they have to be. So if you actually click outside of the image, just like in this gray area, It'll say output size and you can actually hit a custom size. So if you don't know exactly what size it is, of course, I didn't either at first. Just go ahead and hop over to Twitch. You're going to click on your icon in the top right corner and go to video producer. After you're in video producer, you're going to hit preferences and then affiliate. After you hit affiliate, you are going to go down to emotes. Once in emotes, um, you already have one, so this one won't work. So I'm just going to go to tier two. And it'll be the same for tier one. It doesn't matter. They're all going to be the same size. But the sizes are going to be 28 by 28, 56 by 56, and 112 by 112. Do note that this will be different for Discord. There's like, Discord is like just within a range. It can be a certain size. I'm not sure about the specific size. Just Google it and it'll pop up. Um, so for Twitch specifically, these are your sizes, 28, 56, and 112, right? So now with them kapwing um, or capwing, we are going to start out with the 28 by 28, since that is the one that we're doing currently, since we have to do all three. So if we do 28 by 28 and hit done, it doesn't look like anything changed, but it won't until the very end whenever you submit it. And so now this is where the magic really happens. And like, it's a really quick process if you find an image that has a very plain background. Um, so if you click here on the image, you're gonna see these three tools, right? You're gonna click on the eraser tool. So there is another way to do it. The very quick way, or not the very quick way, one of the ways is hit the eraser tool and you can like increase the size of this and erase the whole background. And then you can get smaller and kind of like trace around it. I do not recommend doing that. If you have an image with a really good background, just hit magic wand and click. And you see it pretty much gets everything. After you hit click and you see that it erases and pretty much traces what you want, hit remove pixels. It'll remove those pixels as you see since it now matches the background that was not previously in the image. And you see that there's still some other spots. So you can actually like um, just go to those spots, click there, 
remove pixel. Same thing. Click there, remove pixel. And as you see, that's it. The image is completely traced and you're done. If there was like a really, really small spot you wanted to get, you can just come over here and like increase the size and then like try to click it and get rid of it. But that's not necessary in this case. I don't need it to do that. Um, so click remove pixel. So that's really the important thing is just to make sure that you hit remove pixels after every time that you click. Otherwise, it's not going to well remove the pixels. And after you get the image completely traced, you're going to hit done. And it might throw you off at first because you're like, why did it not keep my pixels erased? It did because if you go back to the eraser tool, you see that they're gone. For some whatever reason, it just like reformats it back to the original. But don't worry. It is done if you hit remove pixels. Go up to the top and hit publish. And then download. And then just save it to wherever you want. Um, I'm going to override this Chimchar edited one right here. And I'm just saving it to my desktop so I know where it is. Then you're going to go back to Twitch. Go to the 28 by 28 or whichever size you currently did at that time. Double click. And there we are. There's Chimchar edited. And then you would literally just do the exact same thing two more times. One for 56 by 56 and one for 112 by 112. If you wanted to, you could literally just hit edit. And it's kind of like a cheat code, right? Just hit edit. Hit the size, custom, just change it to 56 by 56. Hit done, publish, and now it's a little larger, download, and then just change it to Chimchar edited 56, right? So that you know it's 56, so that you know it's 56 by 56. Hit 56, boom, done. I'm just going to go ahead and go through the entire process with you guys because why not? We're already here, right? Edit, custom, 112 by 112, done. Publish, download. I'm going to get lazy with it, 112. Twitch, 112, and that's it. There we go. They're all right there. And then you just have to create a unique code for this specific emote. It can be literally whatever you want. It has a, um, it has like standards that it has to meet and things like that. Literally just put whatever you want and then hit save changes and it'll send it. I don't actually want this to be my emote. Um, I was just doing an example, but that guys, that is literally it. That's the entire process. Um, you can build emotes super fast this way. I was building emotes for a Discord server the other night, and I was just ripping them out, like literally one every couple of minutes, and that was it. It was super fun. As long as you can find pretty clean images online that have nice, like, different backgrounds, this is a super easy trick. And even if not, you can use that other erase feature, and it works really well. But if you do need to do something, like cut something out of a picture that doesn't have a clean background, refer to my other video, which I will have linked down below. But guys, that's pretty much it. If you haven't yet, if this video was helpful, please drop a like on this video. I would greatly appreciate it. It most motivates me to make more videos. Please subscribe to the channel. It's completely free. It takes one second. I would greatly appreciate that as well. And I also am going to start streaming a lot more on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Abanashi. That'll be linked down below as well. Come by and stop. Sometimes I just do just chatting sessions. Sometimes I play some games. It's really whatever. But guys, um, thanks again for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. If it was, again, leave a like, subscribe, and check me out on Twitch. Thanks, guys. Much love.